Hey, it's me again, your favorite biker board game designer, genius teacher, creative weirdo, and stuff. So, uh, last time we talked, who knows when that was, we had this game we were working on, Rail Runner, I'm thinking Trains, and one of the things that we did is we used different files to embed in here. So if I choose this chance card thing, it says, oh, that's that's a file over here called chance card spot.ai. So if I go open that thing up and I go, yeah, yeah this is totally boring. I want to add some more flair to this. Uh, for example, let's put a border around the outside with a, that's horrible looking. Let's switch the colors. Let's bump up the line a little bit. Still not that attractive. We'll come back to this later when I talk about how to make borders and stuff. Maybe that's this tutorial. Okay, so let's just design one real quick. So if I look at brushes, there are custom brush sets. So I'm going to find the border section. And let's see. I'm going to get you so you can see this. Whoa. That got lost. So let's just open this. Brushes. Borders, and there's a bunch of lists that's just off your screen, and I'm going to choose geometric, frames, novelty, primitive lines. Uh, let's try lines. And it'll pop open here sometime this week, and I'm just going to choose one kind of randomly. This one, for example. So now my border looks like that. Okay, so that's a custom brush. It's just a path. It's an outline, okay? It's, a, it's, an, it's an outline object, but the path along it does this. So now I'm going to shrink down this. Really would be enhanced if I chose a different font, which is in type. And there's a whole list that I can see the visuals of right here, and I always like that. So I'm going to go with the same thing I got the title from. And that's always too big. Different fonts come out with different sizes. So let's choose that. So when I choose File, Save, and I go back to my game, you'll see this thing update pretty soon because it says, man, something changed. What do I do? Some files are missing or modified in the links panel. Would you like to? Yes. And now you can see that it's gotten updated. And the other thing I'm thinking of is this background for my train game. Not that great. So I'm going to go back to my file layout for this, my setup. And let's change that background color to something more effective. So if I choose my color panel, Let's choose a hue that's more effective for, I'm thinking, desert stuff. I'm thinking uh, the plains or whatever. There's so many directions I go with, with, with this type of an idea. Let's go back to my layers. I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Dump the color in. Turn this texture thing back on. And again, you can make tons of cool textures by using some simple sh effects and filters and illustrations and whatever. So again, now I choose File, Save. And I come back, and this says the same. Freaking out, man! Something's different. Yeah, it's cool, dude. Relax. And it's going to update, and now I got this. So what we're going to look at right now is, see, remember how we just did a custom brush from the collection to make that little border on the outside of this? We are going to use a brush for the road. Now, this road here is just a path. What I want to do is delete that. And as you may recall, in the last tutorial, I made a separate file for that. Let's go ahead and place that now, and we're going to start updating it. So road, place. This question here just has to do with how tight do you want to trim it. It really doesn't matter for this one, but if you trim to art, it's got no margins. If you trim it to media, it's got the same margins as the original one. So I'm going to go with that, and I might want to use the align panel to center that. So here's a line. I want to make sure I'm aligning it to the artboard, and... Let's go ahead and move that aside, and I'll come back to it as needed. So, uh, back here to my road. So what we're looking at doing is I'm thinking, you know, um, this doesn't look like a train track, and my game is all about trains. So I'm going to make a simple design. I'm going to choose the Line Segment tool. When you design a brush, Illustrator wants, them seeing, wants to see them being horizontal, not vertical. A mistake I frequently make is I make them vertical, because I'm thinking that's the direction my path goes, but Illustrator is like, no, I need them this way, man. So I'm looking at this going, okay, using that spot as a reference, I'm just going to bump the size up of this. And right now what I'm building is a centerline object, which means you can see the, the center line of it through the middle. I'm going to zoom out a smidge. And I'm thinking about the size of this and how wide should it be. I'm thinking that's probably a little bit wider than I really want right now. Um, 
go down to 40. Okay, so now I've got this. And I'm thinking about a train motif on this, so I want to build some other lines. Now there's a lot of stuff. You have to think of what is it you want to build in your game. What does your path look like? And figure out how do you create, using different objects, um, a brush that's going to do that. So what I'm going to do is, let's bump down the size of this railroad tie thingamajig. And I want to space these out evenly. So I'm going to choose this. I just learned this trick the other day. I don't remember what tutorial I looked at. But I found this thing in the effects menu, distort and transform. Transform. I'm like, yeah, what? too easy. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to choose preview. I'm going to choose, let's say, um, four copies. And it wants to know how far is the spacing on these. Let's try 0.25. It's inches. Now that clearly did not appear to be enough. So let's change that to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 half inch. You know what? I still want to stick with uh, 0 0.2 maybe. No, that's not right. Horizontal 0.2. I think my line may be too thick. Let's try 0 0.5 again, I guess. Ah, I don't really like that. 0 0.3. And what I'm going to do now is watch this. If I reduce the stroke a little bit, up here in my panel, it changes all of them. Okay, so I can actually open up my appearance panel, and there's the transform, so I can adjust this after the fact. Now, eventually, I'm gonna make it uneditable again. So let's make this eight copies, and now I can see the eight copies. So this is my 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 train. Now I also want to have spots on here to represent where the player is, so they need to know where to or to be chilling during the game when they're when it's not their turn. Here's where my no, you were over there. No, I was right here. I swear. No, you weren't. You're cheating. So you need to know where your guys can sit. Otherwise, those kinds of arguments ensue. Okay. So okay. So I'm gonna use. Uh, gosh, my layers panel is a genius thing to use right now because I have all this stuff so far. Here's my original path, and I turn stuff off and on to see what it is. I'm going to lock that because eventually I'm going to replace that path. In fact, it might not be a bad idea if I go road and I'm going to make this have its own layer. Even though that's the only thing in it, it makes it much easier for me to like focus on one thing at a time. I'm going to make this one my construction zone. I've never called anything that before. That's fine. Okay. Got a bunch of panels. I'm going to go back to essentials and it resets all my panels. Uh, now, as I said, I want to figure out how to put um, some basic squares through there for my players to stand on. And I'm thinking circles, but I think probably squares are more smart because um, I don't know, circles and squ circles would be like the wheels of the train. So I'm just going to go here and make a square. It's got white fill and black stroke. I need to make it fit there. Okay, so this line here that I made is viewing the transform panel again. How big is this? I got to do a bit of math in the process here. So this thing is 2.5, and I got to get out a ruler and actually look and see how big is this. If I'm using, for example, a dime or um, some little game piece, how many can fit on there? I want to make sure there's room on there for it. So this piece is my my brush and let's say I want to have each spot be three it will be one inch long so if I want each spot to be one inch long then I need to have room for that uh, that's just a bit more so I'm going to set this one at one inch oops that's ten and I want to have uh, a pretty standard let's go yeah point three is pretty good so there's my spot ah, let's go point three five so it's one inch by 0 0.35, 0 0.4 maybe. Okay, and, and a couple times I've gone through a bunch of iterations of the concept trying to get it right now. This, those two pieces need to be aligned. In fact, they all need to be aligned center. So if I go to the align panel and I choose align center, now where to go? Here's what happened. There's a, oops, that's not the right panel. There's a thing that allows me to change which, what it's aligned to. And it's up in the top bar, align, and it's this. I don't know why it's not on the panel. I want to align to selection. 
So now when I align this way, all of it sort of, let's just show that if I do it this way, now it's going to align that way, which is nice. Okay, let's copy this. Oh, you know what? Remember that command we did? Effect, Pathfinder. I was about to do it manually, which is like not need needed. Distort and transform. Transform, not Pathfinder. I got lost there. And let's space these things off. There was an inch wide. Let's do three of these and preview. And let's do them at 1.1. That way there's a tenth of an inch between. And that looks that looks okay. I'm happy. Except I don't need three. I need two. So there I go. So I have some adjustments I still have to make. So I'm going to use my layers panel to um, lock a few things. Let's see. I want to lock those guys. And I want to take this piece and make it long enough. So I space these off with a point one in between. So I'm not really sure. I'm I'm, I'm always getting. Do I do I need to make it the same length or different length? So let me set the length of this and let's see. Three of those at one plus point one is. Let's try it at three point three. Okay. So I did a little bit of math. Three point three. That's why I like even numbers, right? Because it's much easier to uh, do the math with those even numbers. Let me lock this layer with those in it. So now if I take these and I use my align panel to align left and again I'm aligning to object not to the board. Okay. And I need to take this other piece that I locked and align it this way. And I need to go back to my appearance panel choose the transform setting and increase the number here to like 12 and I need to preview or I don't see it happening all these other panels all these other panels essentials clean it up and you can see I made like a couple too many so going back here let's set this number to 10 and there I go so that's what the brush is gonna look like now these objects like for this one uh, where's my pen? There we go. Layers. Okay, so here's these are locked. Let me take this, and it looks like one object. I want it to be three objects, and they all need to be outlines. So I'm going to go object, expand appearance, and I'm going to do the same thing with all these pieces. Object, expand appearance, and they're and they're still all center lines. They need to be outlines to make a brush. So now they're all outline objects. Let's see, there's still one more thing that's not an outline object, and that is this black background. So I'm going to choose that. Notice I locked everything else first so I can select it easier. So using your layers panel effectively really is a way of making your life easier and getting the job done better. So object, and this time I'm going to expand. I did expand appearance before. This will take a centerline object and turn it into an outline object. But bam, see how it's different? You can see the points around the outside. Okay, now the good times are about to roll, brothers and sisters. So I take the brushes panel. I'm going to take this whole thing. Oh, man, I forgot. i got to unlock all the pieces. Only the pieces I want to make the brush into, right? So I'm going to take this and drag that into my brush panel. And it wants to know what kind of brush I want to make. I'm going to make a pattern brush. And it wants to know what it's called. Let's call this Railroad. And I'm going to call it 01. You know what? I never see the darn names of the things. And I'm not going to worry too much about these unless I'm going to have corners. If you're going to have corners, then you have to work out what those are going to look like. And I'm not going to cover that this time. So now I've got, look at this, in my brush panel I got this thing. So let's go back to layers for just a second. Let's lock my construction zone and hide it even. And let's select my path. Let's see, is that locked? It is. I'm going to unlock it. So it's open now. And heading back to my brushes, there's my railroad, and there it is. Okay, so now I've got a railroad looking board. Nifty. File, save, <gasps> run back over here to my game, not this one, this one. And what's it going to say? It's going to give me the panic message. Something changed, man. I don't know what to do. Come on, come on, come on. Tell me. Any second now. I'm pretty sure I just saved that. And at some point, it's going to tell me that it's 
something changed or I guess I can replace it one way you can do this if it's being too slow on you there it is some files are missing or modified update them yes please so now I've got this and if you go back and change it over here it'll change it for you okay in the next tutorial we're going to show you how to make trees and stuff and if I'm thinking about really the trees and stuff I want to put on here it's a lot of trees so I want to figure out a way to make it easier and faster and better See you in a few. Peace. Late.